Hi, I'm Hagai, and today we're going to learn how to do this. This is Cubase Chord Pads, which you can access by pressing this button here or by clicking here, Chord Pads. Either way, what this simple feature does, or a seemingly simple feature does, is let you output chords while pushing a single note on your keyboard. The blue range here is the range on which, if you will push a key, it will output a chord. Now, if I record, something through the chord pads, you just come across a very interesting fact. Look at this chord. One of the most beautiful things about the chord pad is the voicing. It splits the voices very evenly and nicely and even keeps the voice leading between different chords. So if I'll record, you know, like a chord progression, You can see that it basically keeps the voice leading intact and always searches for the smoothest transition between the chords. Basically, it depends on the current player you select here. You can choose between a piano voicing and guitar voicing, and even within these, you get different voicings. And you can custom your own here. The big deal is this. Look what happens if I choose channel. Ta-da! What these uh, vulgar colors basically means is that each of these notes is being output into a different MIDI channel. This is the chord pad default. It outputs every note in the chord into a different MIDI channel, which basically means you get the soprano on channel one, the alto channel two, the tenor on three, if you have other tensions or whatever will be in four and number five or four is for the bass so this is very powerful because what it means is that you have a auto divisi if you want to call it that built into cubase now the prerequisite for it to work like you want is to put the channel on any and what i've done in my example here is i've stacked voices here you know one two three four and different instances and different instruments, all covering the full range of the chords, one, two, three, four, five, etc. and brass, one, two, three, four, five. And I made some doublings just to make it thicker. And what happens is that because it's on any, it doesn't get routed to a single MIDI track. Because if you push one here, no matter what you play in the chord pads, they will all play on the first uh, track. Let, let me demonstrate it. Let's open a new MIDI track with, let's say, contact. And I'll open, hmm, let's say, two short articulations. Let's take individual patches from LBN1, the old version of LBN1. Here, I've got this here. And let's put the lows or the woodwind lows or the woodwinds high shorts and let's add the string low shorts so here now if i play and this one is on the default uh, channel number one and i play through the chord pads i get this but if i put it here on any 
I get this. Bear in mind that it doesn't only split the voices into different channels, it also keeps your voice leading intact. For the final icing on the cake, one of the neat things about these chord pads, it, it can do real-time uh, inversions of the chords. If you go to the edit here and push on the remote control, you can immediately learn any controller you want. I avoid using keys, it's cumbersome. I use the voicing intentions with these controls here. Now I just happen to map them to my leap motion using Gecko, which is now free online. I send 30 and 40 to the up and down motion and to the back and forth motion. Now the way I think about it is the up and down motion relates to the inversions, which makes sense. The higher you go, the higher the inversion. And the more I move forward, the further I get from the original chord into the tensions. And backwards brings me back to the original chord. So, y-axis, inversions, z-axis, tensions. And you can improvise and find very interesting chord progressions and, you know, just type in your basic chords and let the chord pads do the rest of the work for you. That's about it. Don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe, and I will see you on the next video.